Kitchen. Be sure to click the little gear and set the video quality to 4K. Everybody loves mashed potatoes. In this episode, I'll show you how to achieve a very velvety mash without the addition of butter, milk, cream, or any fat at all for that matter. Start with a russet potato. Mine are from Idaho because I live in the US where these potatoes have grown quite a bit of prestige. I was curious about this, so I did a quick search and found the Idaho Potato Commission's pitch. Apparently, these potatoes have got great taste, performance, availability, and of course that customer appeal. Neat. So much for that. On to the recipe. Rinse and peel the potatoes. If you aren't going to peel the potatoes, be sure to scrub them. Cut the potatoes into chunks of equal sizes. For this mash, I'm cutting the potatoes into eighths. But for my own research, I'm also grating a potato, thinly slicing a potato, and leaving one whole. I'll share the determinations of this experiment in a later episode. Now, traditionally, this would be the part where we throw the potatoes in boiling water until they're ready for mashing. The problem there is that the rapid boil cooks the potatoes much too violently. The starch cells in the potatoes burst and turn the mash into a gluey substance that's only edible with lots of butter and milk or cream, which is why traditional mash is unbelievably unhealthy. We're going to use a high-tech method instead that will keep the starch cells in the potatoes intact. Put the potatoes in a big pot and fill it with water. Start the pot on high heat and leave it there until you see foam forming and steam rising. This temperature, about 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 72 C, is the point at which the starch cells most effectively gelatinize. Then, cover the pot, turn off the heat, and leave it for 30 minutes. It's important for this pot of water to be big, that way the temperature of the water has a lot of staying power. After 30 minutes, fish out the potatoes and transfer them to the freezer on a rack, plate, or sheet tray. This rapid cooling phase forms a firm crystalline network between the starch cells and the potatoes. Once the potatoes are fully cooled, they're ready to be boiled. Now, that might seem like a lot of work to do before turning around and just boiling the potatoes the usual way, but the difference is that the starch cells in these high-tech potatoes are firmer and they won't burst under the boil the traditional way. Once our potatoes have completely cooled, what we end up with is quite amazing. The potatoes have a gel-like texture to them, like a stiff jello or something. That's a good thing because mashed potatoes are actually a starch gel. We don't usually think of them that way, but it's what mashed potatoes are. And using the starch trap trick, what we've done is stabilized the starch granules inside of the potato and made it so that when we go to mash them or puree them, the starch cells will remain intact instead of bursting. And what we get is a smoother mash, not a sticky one. The next step is to boil the potatoes as you usually would until they're knife tender. Finally, when the potatoes are absolutely tender, it's time to pull them and mash them up. Back when I was an apprentice at a fancy Michelin-starred restaurant, I used to have to pass mashed potatoes and other purees through a drum sieve, which is a very fine meshed instrument not usually found in home kitchens. To emulate the effect of the drum sieve, push your potatoes through a common strainer into a bowl. I'm using a metal spoon here. This is a fairly labor-intensive process, but I suppose it's a labor of love. The result is very fine indeed. All right, so at this point, I haven't actually added any cream or butter or milk or anything like that. This is just the plain potatoes. And they're actually not bad on their own. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna add any butter to that. I don't think I'm gonna add any milk, any cream. I'm just gonna add salt. And that is the healthiest mashed potato you will ever have. Of course you may choose to add butter or cream or milk to your mash, but I think it's pretty cool to make a mash that's pure potato. And without all of that milk used in traditional mash, the potato's true flavor is unmasked. Thanks for watching.